Setting hinges and control arms may not be the most difficult things when building an airplane, but they can certainly spell disaster if you do them wrong. Over the years, I've developed the procedures used here, usually in response to a failure I've had along the way. I like to install the control horns first because it's just easier to do before we mount the ailerons and other control surfaces. Rather than sandpaper, I use this rasp to scuff up the part of the control horn that gets glued into the surface. The rasp quickly produces deeper scratches than does sandpaper. All these scratches give the epoxy some place to get a hold of to make this a very firm installation. Epoxy can be messy to use, so I use masking tape wherever I can to make cleanup a little easier. I know this sounds like a no-brainer, but always check the fit of anything you're gluing in place before you start putting glue on anything. I use pieces of wood, or in this case a popsicle sticks, for getting epoxy down inside the slots where the control horns go. I just want to coat all the sides of the slots. Then I apply more epoxy to the leg of the control horn that goes into the slot. Then after putting the control horn in place, I pull off the tape and then use the paper towel with alcohol on it to clean up any excess epoxy that remains. Then I make sure that the control horn is still in its proper place and then set it aside to cure. When double control horns are used, I install the end piece for the linkage between them and torque it down as it's supposed to be so the pieces are lined up while the epoxy dries. When installing pin hinges, I also use masking tape along the edges to make clean up a little easier. I also keep lots of paper towel and a spray bottle full of alcohol to make the final clean up better yet. Watch for hinges that might be shortened up a little bit, particularly in horizontal stabilizers. Sometimes the supporting tube is close enough to the hinge line that they have to clip the end of a couple of the hinges. These are the hinges that came with my QQ Yak from Flex Innovations. And even though they have the ribs on them, they still say that you should rough them up with sandpaper. And that's a good idea. To be sure the pivot point stays nice and free on these hinges, I put a little Vaseline around that pivot. Then I hold that pivot over a candle just enough to melt the Vaseline. And that little bit of Vaseline makes it almost impossible to contaminate the hinge point with epoxy. It's crucial that we get a good coat of epoxy in these holes before we set the hinges. I trim down the end of a popsicle stick so it fits into the hole well, and that makes it easy to coat the holes with epoxy. Between the strips of masking tape and the application tool that I made, it's easy to get enough epoxy spread in the holes without contaminating everything around it. There'll certainly be some squeeze out when we assemble these, but using this tool makes it easier to get the right amount of epoxy in there in the first place. I also use the homemade tool for spreading epoxy on the leg of the pin hinge. Then we insert that leg into the hole and move the hinge around in the hole to make sure that all the epoxy gets spread around within it. And then we make sure that the hinge is properly oriented so there'll be no hard spot when the control surface moves. Then after assembling the pieces, we flex the pieces to make sure that the control surface moves easily and smoothly. Then I'll soak some paper towel with alcohol and scrub out the hinge line as best I can. We do this before we take the tape off. Then I'll remove the masking tape from all sides of the joint. Then I go back and clean the entire hinge line again with the paper towel full of alcohol. After making sure to have a nice tight hinge line, I use masking tape to secure the pieces in those positions. We'll put strips of masking tape on both sides to make sure that this can't rock out of position. And we do this on all of the control surfaces. The tail wheel on my QQ Yak from Flex Innovations gets mounted into the rudder, so we have to do that before we can install the hinges. This also gets installed with epoxy, but I can prep this wire a little bit to give it a stronger bond. Using a triangular file, I just file some grooves across the wire to give the epoxy some place to grab onto. Then I coat this out with epoxy and install it, and then let this cure before I assemble the rudder to the plane. And now comes the hardest part of this whole procedure, and that's letting all this stuff sit until the epoxy is good and cured. Nothing good is going to come from moving on to the next step before this one's done. 